With the release of the PlayStation 1, Sony found itself in a fight almost immediately. Sure, Xbox wasn't a thing yet, but they had to go up against Nintendo, who had already solidified themselves with things like the Game Boy and Sega had a hat in the ring with their Genesis console. Both already had well-established mascots. So in order to stay alive, PlayStation really only had one choice. It was do or die. And boy, did they do. You got so many classics like Spyro, Snake from Metal Gear, Final Fantasy, Crash Bandicoot. They were here to play and they were here to stay. Shin. While Nintendo and Sega kind of honed in on who they wanted the face of their company to be, Sony had plenty of mascots to choose from. For the US and most other regions, we got Crash Bandicoot. He was one of their first characters on the console and he was one of the more memorable ones. Anyone who considered Crash as PlayStation's mascot is partially correct. You see in Japan, Sony labeled Toro Inoi, this little cat thing, as the mascot of the PlayStation in Japan. He's a part of the Doko Demo Isio series, where players would interact with these cute creatures and teach them phrases, ask them questions, it's really cool. Toro was being given a healthy stream of games, but the the only issue is none had English support. In fact, the first one to get any kind of English support was one for the PS3 in 2009, which is nine years after Crash Bash came out. He wasn't known like at all in the US. Crash Bandicoot on the other hand was worldwide. His first three games were among the top selling PlayStation games. The odds are starting to favor Crash. And I understand why they didn't want to solidify one mascot for everybody just yet. You wouldn't want to give it to someone who's only going to be popular for a couple of years, kind of like Blinks the Cat. Of course, companies like Nintendo started to bridge the gap between regions, bringing over games like the Lost Levels to help kind of familiarize every region with Mario. This allowed them to easily and seamlessly introduce new characters. It was at this point where the PlayStation's lifespan was finally coming to an end. As we look at the competition, the Dreamcast was Sega's last real console in the US, so that was one company out of the picture. All Sony had to do was keep up with Nintendo, who was quickly upscaling. And that's when the Xbox showed up. You got things like Halo, Need for Speed, Call of Duty. Xbox wasted no time getting their legacy started. They even had Blinks! The answer to Mario, Sonic, and Crash Bandicoot, or Toro and Oi. Unfortunately, Blinks the Cat didn't really sell that well, so Xbox kind of juggled around who their mascot would be. It was around this time when the PlayStation 2 came out, and it was amazing. If we look at a list of the best-selling PS2 games, Crash Bandicoot. His game made a whopping 3 million in sales, right? But that was number 40 out of all the PlayStation games. Fortunately though, new mascots began to emerge from the PS2, like Ratchet and Clank. They had multiple games on the PS2, with one of the most popular of their titles selling nearly 4 million copies, and three of those games outsold Crash's most popular outing this generation. Snake from Metal Gear Solid continued to make a name for himself, of course, God of War came out, and Kratos was instantly a fan favorite, and I mean it's easy to see why. What other game would give you an abandon your daughter quick time event? Sony did not give any fucks during this era. And it shows. I mean, look at the marketing. Look at the ads for the PS2. They're insane. Sony Cat was still popping off big time in Japan. Nintendo even started to solidify Mario as a more rounded character, even showing him in different outings like vacations, sports games, you name it, he was doing it. From this, the Wii was born. Prioritizing fun, colorful games that were E for everybody. The Xbox 360 and the PS3 on the other hand, kept their catalog open to everything from teen to mature to even adult in some cases. There were so many games that overlapped between the three main consoles. GTA 5 basically ran the show for the PlayStation 3, being its top selling game and all. Gran Turismo rounded out second, and of course, The Last of Us took over third. We also saw Sackboy come in and fuck shit up. For a while there, Sackboy was one of PlayStation's most pushed mascots. As I mentioned earlier, we got our first Sony Cat game for the US, and it was pretty well received. We saw less of an emphasis on Crash Bandicoot. This was another era of trial and error for Sony after all. And they had no problem taking things from their competitors. You see the Kinect? Well, have you seen this Sony gun thing? They weren't afraid to copy off ideas from Nintendo either. They had their eyes set on something that Nintendo's been doing for decades. Of course, Nintendo had plenty of mascots to choose from, and instead of picking ones from each game, they decided to smush them all together and create Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros Brawl. It's one of the most notorious games on the Wii's catalog. What can I say that hasn't been said about it already? We could talk 
about how Snake was added in the Brawl. That's kind of interesting, right? You don't think they would have wanted to add Toro or even Crash, right? This is because Kojima, the creator of Metal Gear Solid, was friends with Sakurai at the time, and he wanted Snake to be in Melee, but with the Rush production, he wasn't able to get him in in time. So the next best thing was to put him in Brawl, which they did. Interesting story, right? Anyway, Sony saw this success with Smash Bros and said, how can I do it, but better? Sony All-Stars Battle Royale. It's one of the most interesting games made by Sony. Instead of choosing just one mascot, why not put them all in a pit and make them fight to the death? Kratos and Sackboy versus Spyro and Toro was now possible. I love the idea, and it was a love letter for a lot of Sony characters. Well, except Crash, he wasn't invited, I guess. Here's another fun fact about this game. Every character in this PlayStation game has not made an appearance in another fighting game. Like all these characters, none of them made it into Smash Bros. So it seems like Snake was the only one to make it out alive. That being said though, a lot of the mascots found work elsewhere. Crash Bandicoot had a really endearing Mario Party spinoff on the DS called Crash Boom Bang. It, it actually sucked, holy shit. Spyro found a new home with Skylanders. The PS3 was also the last we would see of Toro for a good while. Sony's mascots began leaving or just becoming affiliated with whole new franchises. But it seemed like with every mascot that dropped, a new one almost immediately came and took its place. So how long could Sony keep this up for? The PlayStation 4 was another success for Sony. It won by doing almost nothing. Sony remembered that they had Spider-Man, creating the Spider-Man games and even the Spider-Verse movies, which are so good. One could argue that Spider-Man was slowly becoming their new mascot. Spyro was doing his own thing. Ratchet and Clank got a movie though, which was pretty interesting. God of War was back. Sony was once again trying to test the waters and see which characters stuck with people. So nobody could have predicted what Sony pulled out of their ass next. So remember how I mentioned PlayStation had dabbled with Kinect technology and everything? Creating a line of VR headsets and VR games. Sony needed a game that would just solidify the VR as something that was here to stay. Astrobot Rescue Mission. One of the highest rated VR games on the PlayStation. It's won several awards. It's so good. It's beautiful, it's a really fun game. He's just adorable, right? It was perfect for what Sony wanted to achieve. The only problem was it wasn't really a huge hit sales-wise. It sold 700,000 copies from what I'm able to gather, and that makes sense, right? Not only do you have to have a PS4, but you also need to have VR accessibility. The average consumer was not going to be able to play this unless they shipped out another $200, $300 in order to get it. So why do I bring up a game that didn't even touch a quarter of a million in sales? Because this is Sony's last attempt at making a mascot for everybody. Astro's Playroom, one of the best games in Sony's relatively small PS5 catalog. If you haven't gotten a chance to play it, at least go watch someone play it or listen to the OST. It's really good. It's a platformer that loves throwing in all these Sony characters and all these references. It's just so fun. And it wasn't for nothing either. It showed off what the PlayStation 5 was capable of, especially with the controller, like gyro stuff. It could change colors on a whim. You could use the touchpad as like a sensor. There was so much stuff you could do with it. It even played off the idea that Astro is in your PS5, and I just think that's so endearing. The levels were beautiful and they were really fun, really well thought out puzzles. It's kind of like a glorified demo. PlayStation and Sony, they wanted to craft a love letter for all the work they've done over the years. It's a really good game. Like seriously, if you have a chance to play it, play it. Why does any of this matter? Why does Astro matter? Well. He's being marketed like crazy right now. Not only has he gotten Androids, he's gotten plushies, he's gotten everything. He's getting pop-ups and huge pinball machines right here. Look at this is new. This is like brand new stuff. And you know why? It's because they're giving him a brand new game. It's gonna bang. It's gonna be so good. And I think this is gonna be the game that solidifies Astro as Sony's PlayStation mascot for everybody going forward. He's just a cute little robot dude who's just cartoony enough and just robotic enough to feel like he's in the middle. You know, you got Mario right here, you got Astro, and then you got Master Chief. It just feels perfect. And you know what? I welcome him. He's just a fun little guy who just wants to go around your PS5. I think it's perfect. It only took Sony like 30 years to come up with a mascot for everyone, right? Better late than ever. I think right now, Astro is Sony's PlayStation mascot. It's changed over the years, but now it's his turn.